you have your Bibles, open them to Galatians chapter number, well, we're going to start in cha chapter number three. We'll spend most of our time in chapter number five. But um, last week we were in chapter number two and we were talking about the controversy. The reason that Galatians was written, one of the most important books in all of the Bible, is it, it really defines our salvation. We know that the Bible says that we are saved by grace through faith. It is not a, uh, of ourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. It's just the grace of God. Now, the controversy began when Paul was taking the gospel to other places um, and Gentiles began to be saved. Uh, people started to follow uh, after Paul really to condemn him and to, um, to really to um, tell him that no, you can get saved by Jesus, but then you have to become a person of the culture. You have to follow Judaism. You have to become a good Jew. You have to be circumcised, men. And, and these are, you have to follow all of the commandments. There were 613 Jewish commandments, and you were expected to follow them all. How many of y'all follow all of them? How many of y'all follow the top ten? How many of you follow the, just the one, that there's one Lord and you love him with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength? Do you follow there? I wish I always loved him with all my heart. Sometimes I'm a little selfish and I don't put God first. But I don't walk around guilty. How many of y'all love being guilty? How many of y'all love to be grieved? How many of you can go around and condemn yourself? Any condemners in the room? How many of you get woke up in the middle of the night thinking about the things that you should have done, you could have done, but you did not do? How many of you just go around and say, I messed up again. Oh, terrible person that I am. Now, please understand and know this, that all have sinned. Y'all good with that? All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All of us. And once you get saved, that just means you're forgiven. I wish it meant I would never sin again. And one day it will mean when I have my full sanctification and my full glorification, but now I'm just a work in process. So in the book of Galatians, Paul is talking to these people who have begun to hear the message from these Judaizers that now that they have become Christians and received Christ, now they have to become Jews. So in Galatians chapter 3, verse 1, it says, O foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you that you should not obey the truth? Really, one of the versions says, who has cast a spell on you? Who has been talking to you and has convinced you that you will not obey the truth before whose eyes Jesus Christ was, was clearly portrayed among you as crucified. This only I want to learn from you. Did you receive the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Did you get right with God because all those commandments that told you what you were supposed to do, did, did, it, is that what brought you to God or was it simply the grace of God, the, the work of the Spirit and living by faith. He says in verse 3, Are you so foolish? Having begun in the Spirit, are you now being made perfect by the flesh? If you got saved by grace through faith, are you now perfected by your works, all those things that you do? by being a good person. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm for being a good person. Y'all good for being a good person? I think we should do the best we can. I think we should do it with all of our heart. I think we should seek to love God more every day. I think we should love others as Christ loved us. But I'm still in the flesh. I still have uh, things that I'm trying to work on. Now, I have my expectations for me, as all of you have your expectations for you. 
And for me, I mess up so, so often, I fail in reaching the expectations that I have. But I also have others who put expectations upon me. And they think this is what I should do, and that's what I should do, and I should look like this, and I should do this. And if I don't meet their expectations, I fall below and they will condemn me. Now, you know what I'm talking about. And you try to do your best, and sometimes our best is just not enough. And sometimes we condemn ourselves, but sometimes we fall under the condemnation of others as they condemn us too. And it's just hard. It's just hard. I know I've got to be the best Brian I can be, but I need help. I need strength. And there's some things that I need to give my heart and life to, and there's some things that I just need to give up on. My expectations for me do not trump God's expectations for me. And your expectations for me do not put me in a prison. But the Spirit of God has come and has opened that door and has freed the prison where I can come forward to live a new life. Jesus said, I have come that you may have a life and that you may have it more yeah, You know the Word of God, that you may have it more abundantly. I'm for the abundant life. But these, these condemnations, these expectations, these rules and regulations are too much of the wrong thing. And your heart doing them so that you would be right with God, it's not of works. We do them not because we have to. We do all that we can because we love God and we want to do the right thing. So we hear the Word of God. Listen now. We believe the Word of God. By faith, we accept the Word of God. And because it is faith, we seek to do the Word of God. We believe. We hear from God. We believe. And then by faith. Now, faith is a unique thing. I knew more about the Word of God than I was living before I got saved. But I was under the condemnation of sin because I had not been forgiven. And I knew I needed to be saved because the Holy Spirit began to woo me. You know what I'm talking about? It began to draw me to himself, convict me of my sin, but let me know that he loved me and let me know that he wanted to save me. And I knew what salvation was. I knew what the Word of God said. I believed it. I trusted that it was the way, the only way, but by faith I had to receive it. There was something I had to do. And it was a decision, it was hard. There was part of me that was pulling me to God and part of me that was pulling back. But faith means I didn't understand what was on the other side, but I knew I needed to do it. And it was a, wow, was it a change. And, and I gave my heart and life to God. And it was different because the Holy Spirit. Y'all heard of the Holy Spirit? The breath of God. You have our Father. We have our Savior. But the voice, the whisper, the encourager, the one who would come alongside us, the one who would live within us, very much the same deity as the rest of the Trinity. It is God's gift. It is the bond. It is the, it is the engagement ring. He holds us. He keeps us. He loves us. He encourages us, us, us on. It is God's best. So I gave up on me and I gave in to him. But what they were being taught was, okay, now that you're a Christian, now you've got to obey these 613 commandments.
Anybody here want to obey 613 commandments? I mean, I got trouble with two or three, right? I'm still having trouble with that love your neighbor. <laughs> to pray for those who despitefully use you, right? But the gift of God, the salvation by faith, believing and trusting, and, and, and by faith, I've got to do that which I don't want to do necessarily all the time. But I've got to reach out and do it because love does. The old law is not going to get you there. The love of Christ will get you there. Amen? So flip over to chapter 5. We're going to begin in verse 1 again in chapter 5. So Paul's been preaching to him a little bit. And he gets to chapter 5, verse 1, and he says, stand fast. Hold your ground. Don't go back. What you know to be true, what you know to be the Word of God, don't give up on. I don't care how you condemn yourself. There's something better. I don't care the expectations that the world puts on you. I don't care that they're trying to judge you by their standard. Stand fast in what you know God has blessed you with. He says, stand fast, therefore, in the liberty by which Christ has made, you, made us free. Now, let's say that word together. Free. Let's say it. Free. Do y'all like that word? Let's try it again. Free. How many of you want to be free in Christ? Say it. Free. I like that word liberty. I love liberty. I don't want to be in bondage. I want to be set free. We have the freedom to do as God leads us and as we choose, but I choose Jesus. Hold your ground. Don't move away from the freedom. It's freedom to not do what does not relate to salvation. But it's the freedom to yield and follow the Holy Spirit and do that which comes from salvation. We may have license, but don't let it lead you into bondage. Liberty is living as we should, not as we please. Take your Bibles and flip over to 1 Corinthians chapter number 10. In 1 Corinthians chapter number 10, Paul has been talking, he's been asked the question about food that was offered unto idols and whether they could uh, buy that food and eat it because after it was offered to an idol, it was sold to the community and it was sold at a uh, lesser price because it had already been offered up to an idol. So if they wanted to have good, cheap food, they could go and get that. Now, that did not mean that they were bowing to the idol. And probably because all of us would say, hey, I, I'm not going to do that. I, I, I'm not going to do that. But would it be sin? What if you went to someone's house, Paul talks to them about, and they're serving you food that they bought uh, down at the, at the idol supermarket, all right, the old, the old pagan temple, and, and you're there and you're saying, oh, no, no, I, I'm not eating that. That was offered unto an idol. You know what you've just done? You've offended the cook. You've offended the family. And they, they invited you over. Maybe this is the time that you can share the goodness of God and what God's done for you. And, and you go to, to help them understand the liberty that we have in Christ. But if you're going to be one of those that, that wants to be, <clears throat> well, you know, the old timers and we're, 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 uh, we're the hard cast. Have y'all ever heard of that group? I've, I've heard Baptists called Hard Shell Baptist. Have y'all, anybody ever heard of the hard shells? Now, what were they known for? 
King James only. If it was good enough for Paul and Silas, it's good enough for us. Even though the King James didn't come till the 1600s. I don't know about all that. Heard a person tell me one time, they said, when we get to heaven, it'll be King James only. They'll be seeing Southern Gospel only, right? That's the official language of heaven. That's the official sound of heaven. And I'm thinking there's every language, tongue. You know, I'm looking forward to hearing some different music, Brother Mark, when we get to heaven. I want to hear some different cultures. I want to hear the saved come out of their heart and soul. Lisa, you and Eddie did that. That was the song that y'all picked, and it was just something. It was a song that, that preached to you, and you sang it from your heart as praise unto God, and that's good enough for me. I've never heard the tune for Psalms 23, but I believe I'd like to hear David sing it. My mom said you couldn't have drums in church. Eddie, you'd be in trouble. Johnny, she'd give you the eye. Anybody know people like that? And they would tell you how you had to look and how you had to talk and what was allowed and what wasn't allowed. And it, you, you say, tell me where in the Bible it says that. Oh, not in. So let me get to 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse number 29. This is where we need to be following. He says, conscience. I say not your own, but that of the other. Their conscience is now casting a shadow on your conscience. For why is my liberty judged by another man's conscience? So am I supposed to give up my liberty so that I can please you? So I can do it like you want me to? Now hold on. You're about to get offended at me. You're, you don't have anything wrong with that, and you think that, that everybody's supposed to just go along to get along. Christ set you free. He set you free unto himself. Listen, I don't care what the culture says. I don't care what mom and dad said. There's a higher calling. And when you got saved, you got saved by the power of God you got drew by the Holy Spirit and you accepted His salvation and you accepted into your life the Holy Spirit of God. Now we've got a new life that we live unto Him. And whatever the Holy Spirit amens, we should amen. Wherever the Holy Spirit leads, we should follow. Whatever the Holy Spirit tells us that we should do, come on now church, this is not just a sermon. This is the Word of God for us, the people of God. Praise be to God. Whatever the Holy Spirit tells us we should do, we, out of love for Him, should do. We should follow. We should adhere to. I've been a Christian for a long time. I've been preaching for more years than I haven't been preaching. And yet, I still, <clears throat> every day, am looking for the Holy Spirit out of His love, out of His interest of that which is best for me and for the world, I am trying to obey. Obey. Do. Adhere. I said this Wednesday night and I got some strange looks. The hardest thing in preaching to Christians, preaching to people who know the Word of God, is that they know the Word of God. Preacher, explain that. They have come to a place where they know a little bit of the Word of God and they're okay with that and they never hunger for more. I'm hungry. I want more. I don't know why you came today. Maybe it was just because of your Christian tradition that you wanted to come to church. I don't know why you're, it, are you following along in your Bible or not following along? I don't care if you're reading the King James or the New King James or the New Living Translation. I don't think you need to be reading a paraphrase. I think you need to take the Greek and the Hebrew. Somebody who took that word and translated it over to the language that you speak, that is the word of God. I think we should do that. 
I, I know we should do that. I understand it's the Word of God. But I don't know why you're here, but did you come expecting to be touched by the hand of God? Did you come to worship out of an overflow of your heart? Are you willing for God to speak to you, and are you expecting to leave different? It's hard to preach to people who've already found their rut and never want to do more or less. They're just going to do that. But I've got liberty. I got freedom. I have been set free by the power of God. I'm not bound by this world. I'm not bound by how everybody else thinks. Your conscience is your conscience. But I want the Holy Spirit to be my conscience. He will follow and lead me. Take your Bible and go back to Galatians and, and look in chapter number 2. Galatians 2. This is the reason why he's speaking this message of liberty to them. Galatians 2 verse 4. And this occurred because of false brethren secretly brought in, who came in by stealth to spy out our liberty that we have in Christ Jesus, that they might bring us into bondage. That's the Word of God. Christ set you free, but Satan is bringing in these false people so that they can steal your liberty and bring you back into bondage. If you leave this place today with guilt and shame and bondage, that's on you. Because Christ came to set us free. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. There's freedom. Take them chains off and let them down. Let it go. Be set free. I used to say when I was a young preacher and I didn't have much of a chance to, to preach, I said I felt like I was a wild stallion in a stall and I was just wanting somebody to open the stall and let me run. That's what we get a chance to do every day. You see, I want to I want to shine the light of Christ everywhere I go. I want to love on people with a love that they're desperately hungry for. I want to be kind. Amen? I want to wear a smile. I want to speak to people. And when the Holy Spirit says, share my name, I want to share His name with joy and love. I am not ashamed of the one who's changed me and, and made me who I am, a child of the King. People need the Lord. People need love. People need to know that you care because Christ cared for you. That's what will change us as people, is, is forgetting all the regulations and just following the love of Christ. If you obedient to the love of Christ, if it's good enough for him, it ought to be good enough for everybody else. Living the love life. Love does, not judges, not tears down. Love builds up. Look in chapter 5, in verse number 4. You have become estranged from Christ. Oh, really? He defines it. You who attempt to be justified by law. Let me say it this way. Laws, by your actions, by how good you are. Those who seek to attempt to be made just by, by doing things. You have fallen from grace. Now, everybody look up here. That does not mean you lost your salvation. It means you've turned your back on the grace of God. You receive salvation by grace through faith, correct? Right? But if you start looking for something else to justify yourself, 
You've turned your back on the thing that saved you, God's grace. How many of you want to be judged? No. Aren't you grateful that God gave you mercy? How many of you want to live the high life? Aren't you grateful that he blesses with grace? Can I say it the way Brian wants to? Again and again and again. How many of you get grace every day? All the time. How many of you just mess up and you, oh, I can't believe I did that. I can't believe, oh, I do it without even meaning to. I, I, can, I can say the wrong thing better than anybody. And but, but God's grace is there to say, I love you anyway. You're my child. You might not be there, but we're working on some things together. It's the love of Christ that compels me. So let's, let's read on. Look in verse 5. For though, for we through the Spirit eagerly wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. That means the right living because I'm trusting in Him to do it. I can't do it. But by faith, I believe He's going to do it. For those who have ears to hear, God's up to something. And you're either going to sit back and wait to see if it comes or you're going to act as if he's already promised it. And because he's already promised it, because he's already said it was good, because he already said it would be blessed, it's going to be fun. It's going to be great. It's going to be exciting. People's lives are going to be changed. Good things are going to happen. And you can, you can be one of those that sits back and says, well, I'll believe it when I see it. Or you can be one of those that says, because you have promised, I will act on your word when I have not yet seen the fulfillment of your word, but because you promised it, I'm going, to be, I'm going to act like it is true when it's not true so that it will be true. That's faith. Look in verse 6. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision, that is the acts of the law, the ones who are doing those things, have done those things or not, that's, that, was, that was a sign that was given to Abraham. But even for Abraham, in uh, Genesis 15, verse 6, it says Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness. It wasn't the circumcision. They were just trying to say that they were different from the world. Now in the New Testament, we're different from the world because we have the Holy Spirit living within us. Not an outward act, but the inward act of the Holy Spirit within us. He says in, in verse 6, for in, for in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision avails anything, but it's faith working through love. Faith working through love. The ignition of our faith that came at our salvation is being reproduced over and over again. Not one act of faith, many acts of faith. A continuous act of faith. A continuous belief and trust. That's my word for this year. Trust means I'm in trouble unless God comes through. Trust means I don't have a way out unless God makes the way. Trust means I'm sunk. I'm separated. I'm fruitless. Unless God, but God changes everything. And it comes when God gives his best. A couple weeks, we're going to finish chapter 15 and we're going to get to the fruit of the Holy Spirit in verse 14. And the very first fruit of the Holy Spirit is what? Say it. Come on, church. Y'all afraid to say it? Yeah. 
Jesus let them beat him. They spat in his face, they pulled out his beard, and they cursed him. They whipped him with a cat of nine tails. They beat him with canes. They hung him naked on the cross, drove the spikes through his hands and his feet. They put the crown of mocking, the crown of thorns upon his head. You ever heard the song, he could have called 10,000 angels? But what kept him on the cross? Love. Every one of those fruit of the Holy Spirit come out of love. How many of you know the love of God? If you've been saved, you know the love of God. As undeserving as we are, we are the recipients of his love. My wife's downstairs. She's, she's playing with the kids. Sometimes I just need a hug. My wife gives good hugs. By the way, y'all can't have them. They're all mine. Sometimes she'll just come and she'll say, I'll be sitting at the house or something. She'll grab my hand and she'll just pick me up and she'll throw those sweet little arms around me. There's something about the touch, right? And I go from whatever place I'm at to here. You know why? For one, one strange reason, that woman loves me. And I have learned that the more I love her, the more she will love me. And the more she loves me, the more it spurs me on to love her. I've been married 36 years. Can I tell you, it's better now than it's ever been. It's sweeter now than it's ever been. But I've been a Christian for 52 years, and sometimes I just need a hug of the Holy Spirit. I just need Him to come and flow in my heart. This is what I have learned. As I allow Him to love me, it gives me more love for you. And it gives me more love to share. I don't ever run empty. I don't understand it, but the more I love, the more He overflows His love. And that great gospel song, what the world needs now is sweet love. I don't know if that was a gospel song or not, but it works for me. Hey, hey man, we need to sing it at church. You do that, choir sing it next week. No, I know it. You're going to hear a real preacher next week. That's all I got to say. You're going to have to come figure out who it was, but it's not going to be me. I love you with an everlasting love. If you love Christ, love him more than anything else. Too many people today are being influenced by the culture of the world. They're listening to the voice of the world, and they're lonely, and they're hurt, and they're empty because the world can't help, but Christ can.